Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting night here at Blaster Pro. With me, as always, is Charles Blaster Pro Craig. Matt's hard to follow, isn't he? Yeah, you well, can't do Matt's intro. I don't want to do Matt's intro. You know, what? you know, we, we should just take one of Matt's intros and just use it, <laughs> and then cut back to us. Didn't we talk about having a Matt cutout? We were talking about a Matt cutout, um, but you know what? Uh, Echo sitting in that chair works even better. What if I got a big inflatable Jigglypuff? No. 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 It's pink and... Uh, mm. um, you know, I did have a thought today. Um, oh, really? Uh, about getting a hold of some... I was wondering what the expense is, and I, so you might be the person to ask. Uh, what is the expense on bean bag pellets? Like the little white ones? Yeah, the staticky foam ones. Like you, you know, blow them up, they stick to everything. I know that you can buy them by the bag full yeah, for like, filling up beanbag chairs, yep. but I've not priced them yet. Okay. Because I was thinking about, because we're going to be making a new duct tape mannequin soon. And uh, the last duct tape mannequin I made, and Caden was actually asking me about it. Uh, the reason why I got rid of it is because it had no real support at the bottom, so it kind of failed. It was a torso mannequin for making armor. You know my Roman suit of armor? Yeah. I made it on that mannequin. But what happened was it was filled with packing peanuts. Well, it had to be better than the inflatable one I had. Yeah. Actually, I had an idea with that inflatable one, and I was going to foam fill it. Yeah, we would fill it with spray foam. But I didn't like the shape of it and the dimensions. It was all off. It was, like, very blow-up dollish also. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, anyway, welcome, everybody. <laughs> The mannequins and and and, and it one. just always inevitably leads into sex There's dolls. Some freaky stuff on there. <laughs> There's some freaky stuff. Oh, try Alibaba. Inflatable sheep. Bosco, the inflatable party sheep. We got that for a friend of mine when I was like 19. You can also buy the booze guitar. You can fit a whole candle up its butt. You, you know what the booze guitar is? No, is it's this a, like the? It's a fake guitar that looks like a real guitar, but it holds two fifths of whiskey. Oh, this is not like the Russian roulette gun. Did you ever see those? Yes, the I Russian roulette those. water gun. Yeah, so the blues guitar looks like a real guitar. So you can go to like a festival or something and walk around with a, you know, like has no alcohol or anything, or not allowed to have alcohol. You walk around with a guitar on your back, but it's actually a giant flask. Now, can you get one that's like a guitar? A key, no. All right, we're done. Because nobody wants to hear a key talk. Obviously, they might want to hear you play the guitar. Obviously, you can see there is no Matt tonight. Matt is going to be gone for like a month and a half. So uh, we'll have Rodney. Uh, and if Rodney can't be here because he's unpredictable also, um, we will get some guest hosts. We might actually reach out to Larry because Larry is always fun to be. Ooh, can we get me and Larry at the same time? We can do that. And I'm going to put you – I'm going to put Larry between us. Is so, it a buffer? No, because you and Larry will go off on your tangents, and then Larry and I will go off on our tangents, and it'll be like two separate shows. <laughs> <laughs> you guys talk about rust and guns and hiding in the woods. Uh, currently, it is Vietnam stuff. And he and I will talk about props and prop making and how to get the barber's chair in his car when he goes home. Which is where the Vietnam stuff is yeah. coming from. <laughs> so Casting anyway. grenades. So uh, yeah. since Matt's not going to be here, we'll have Rodney filling in until uh, Rodney is no longer able to fill in and it might just be me by myself. Hayden might jump in. He's never been behind in front of the camera, but he's kind of warming up to the idea. Isn't that right, son? For loco. No. He said no. He's no. Anyway. I'll bribe him with Takis. <laughs> no Takis. No Takis in the house tonight. Not gonna work. So anyway, um, Etsy. We're talking about Etsy real quick. The Etsy store is still up and running. It's actually been getting a little bit busy with the limited amount of stuff that's on there. I am going to put up something special on the Etsy store. I've been wanting to do it for a long time. I don't have enough examples that have tips, but I have one custom blaster. I have two custom blasters here, and I'm going to repair the one that's broken, and I'm going to put those two blasters up with tips on because I have to. You know, I got in trouble for airbrushing tips on. Yeah, that, that was dumb. Uh, it was not dumb. the airbrushing. That was just dumb. It is dumb. Well, anyway. So anyway, what's going on is um, I am going to be putting up a custom blaster, uh, custom DL44s uh, up so you can build your own custom DL44. That's going to be going up hopefully this week. And uh, the Hoth should have already been up, but uh, I had trouble uploading the uh, files. So we're going to get that rectified. And the Hoth will also be going up. Still haven't heard from our winner. Um, 
Where is my his his things right there? His cards right there. I've been holding on to it. <laughs> to claim your prizes, you actually have yeah. to, you know, Mike. Claim your prize. I think I think he entered as Michael Miller. But anyway, Michael Miller, uh, you're still our winner for uh, last month. So if you uh, see this, go ahead and message me on uh, Facebook uh, through Blaster Pro or uh, send me an email. Throw up my email real quick. No! Oh, no. There you go. Good job. So anyway, um, this month's trivia contest is going to be on the 28th. It's going to be a Bespin DL44, and we'll be playing Family Feud. Um, yeah, and Family Feud's a lot of fun. It's now my third favorite train wreck. Used to be my second. Can we have Pyro? No, we're not going to have Pyro. Uh, no, but... Chime in if you want Pyro. Uh, you haven't been on since uh, we talked about... Uh, Pyro? No, you weren't even here when we talked about how well the buzzers worked and how appreciative we were about something that you made that did not catch fire and didn't hurt anyone. That's why I feel we need to slide back down that hill and go with pyro. Well, see, here's the thing. When you make something that even works right, it's something you shouldn't have made anyway, and it ends up, well, you got hit with a chair because of the Nerf dart. Remember that? The Nerf? Okay, I was <laughs> trying to shoot Joe, but then... No, you, Deb was you there. aimed at Deb and shot Deb. The rate of fire on that was freaking awesome. The, what it looked like three thousand feet per second, or three thousand? Yeah, it was only shooting about three hundred feet per second. It, it but was the rate of fire was fantastic. Anyway, yeah, we're not, we're not going. We're we're not doing that anymore. I built it for my daughter. I know, and which is another thing, you know. So anyway, tonight's topic. Rodney, what is our tonight's topic? Since werewolves, where no, uh, <laughs> we're making. So last week we were trying to get a conductive surface <laughs> on plastic parts, and uh, we ended up using graphite and um, lacquer clear coat as the bonder to bond or hold the graphite to the plastic parts, and apparently that works. No, no stop no, doing no, it. No, stop. You cried. No. Oh. So tonight. Um, Rodney is actually going to talk about copper because I've done too, too much copper research and uh, he actually talked to uh, an experienced person that gave him, took away, a, 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 I was looking at a really convoluted formula and getting like a pH meter, all kinds of crap. Why? You just dump the stuff into the thing. Right. Well, well anyway. That's how we work here. Uh, you talked to someone who gave you better advice on yeah. how to do it, and we'll talk about that. I, uh, tonight, we're actually, while we're sitting here, we're actually going to make um, the nickel solution. Uh, I, I've noticed through other experimenting that the nickel, when you want to plate nickel, it doesn't like to go on to too many different things. Like if I make the graphite solution, and try to nickel plate the graphite solution, it's not going to work that well. It doesn't want to go. But it, but the copper loves it, and the copper will coat a lot easier. So we, we, we can use copper. We can plate in copper and then plate over the copper. Would we have to put nickel? Did he say put nickel on the freaking Nickel, from, or, from my own experience. Well, go see my notes. Some of the research I did, they started with a zinc base, uh, but it looked like crap. Uh, and it took a lot of extra sanding and a lot of work. And when it was all finally done, it still looked lumpy and not very good. And I don't want to be cleaning up detailed parts and recoating nickel until I get a nice smooth nickel coat. Plus the stuff was how much? It was like 60 bucks a can. I remember. Yeah, it was, it, it's very expensive. And, uh, maybe I'll try it in the future if this doesn't work out, but I'm have a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, hope for the graphite. A lot of hope for graphite. Okay. Uh, put our anode and cathode. Okay. Don't worry about it. We'll get to copper in a minute. <laughs> Let's work on nickel. So to make our nickel solution, we're actually going to use uh, uh, nickel as our anode and cathode. So they will, one will be pulling nickel off. And uh, the nickel will deposit itself into our solution. Um, the solution we had to make, uh, all, all the 
recipes for nickel solution uh, included vinegar day, white vinegar, clear vinegar, and uh, salt. So and basically, electrolyte. We, yes, and we've already uh, yes. Kosher. Oh, I got whatever the kosher. hell it is in my Hayden house. says kosher salt. <laughs> Rodney said sea well. salts, and I say uh, no. I want that pink stuff. The pink. pink no, salt. we're not using no, the pink stuff. Anyway, so anyway, this solution we have right Artesian. here, Artesian, is uh, basically salt and vinegar, and we tested it with the multimeter for conductivity. And uh, the more salt we added, we probably could run more salt in this, but we're, we Super ran, saturate the solution. Yeah, we ran out of salt. Um, but we can actually get it if you can hear it, the it'll beep when it's conducted. It was working when we weren't filming. Yeah, hear it beep, beep, beep. So we've lowered the resistance and we have a conductive vat. Now keep in mind your anode is your positive and your cathode is your negative. Yes. And no one will care about this. Just think positive and negative or red and, and black. And your right. material will go from positive to the negative. Is yes, that correct? Yes. That is correct. Okay. So our source of nickel, um, I looked up nickel plates uh, for what you were getting for 99% uh, uh, nickel plates or little pieces was expensive and you didn't get a lot. So I found a solution, and that is cutting off people's um, no ninety nine percent nickel welding rods. So um, this is a welding rod. I think I got uh, twenty five rods for uh, less than forty bucks. So that's a pretty good amount of nickel. Yeah. So anyway, um, this uh, matter of fact, I figured it out those plates were very thin, and they were like ten bucks a piece. I think those plates were about as much as one whole rod is. Well, yeah, you got to make money somehow, yeah. suckers like us. <laughs> so, anyway, so to be able to use flux, uh, flux coating. So I just basically laid it on the ground and chipped it away with a hammer. It comes off real quick and easy. And uh, then I scored it, kind of clean them up with a red scuff pad, kind of making sure... I got the whole coating off and got the nickel nice and exposed. Now, these are 99% nickel. So what we're going to do. What's the 1%? Yeah, what is 1%? I don't know what the 1% is. Love. The 1% is love. The 1% is love. I actually hope. <laughs> so we don't know if any of this is going to work. We really don't. We're, you guys are learning as fast as we are, are going or learning as we go along. All right. So I have. Oops. That ain't going to work. There and this is an important project because there is a local werewolf problem. There is not a local werewolf problem, and we're not silver plating. This is nickel. Yeah, but we got to start somewhere. Jeff's on. Hi, Jeff. It's Jeff. <clears throat> Jeff, your battle belt is in your uh, locker in case I'm not here tomorrow because I'm really tired and my eyes hurt. So to do this, um, I'm using a fancy dancy uh, power supply, which most people won't have, which is totally fine because... Uh, I have a whole box of power supplies from uh, cell phone chargers all the way up to um, computer power supplies. I had three of those go out today. <clears throat> all right. Because that stupid storm. <laughs> so my alternate power supply is sitting over there. It's a five volt um, uh, power supply. It went to something. I don't know what it was, but I, I'm not going to go get it because it's just a wall unit. And I just cut the plug off. And then you don't like the thousands of power supplies I brought you. I have a box created just because you had power supplies everywhere. <laughs> because I forget that we have that. There's one. power supplies over yeah. there, and that drawer is full of power. Those power supplies are also going in the power supply <laughs> box. Huh? Yes. The you know, yes, there is. They are super handy to have all those power supplies laying around. Whatever, uh, death robots. Um, yeah, you sometimes you need to power Rodney up. projects, Rodney projects. Uh, we, he Jerry rigged a power supply for the uh buzzer system. I don't know why he has that operating at 36 volts. There's no reason, to no, it's worse than that. In reality, it's, it's, it's 24 volts and 12 volts, but I didn't use a voltage divider on it, I just got bored and plugged in another power supply. But it's yeah, so it has fun. a it has a another a second power supply, it's got uh, like a cell phone charger power uh, supply, <laughs> and, and it's um electrical taped to the uh 
to the side of and steak guns because yeah. the steak guns fit right over the plugs. Yeah. So anyway, it's not dangerous at all. Everything I do is safe. So anyway, we're using a power supply just because this gives us to total total control over the voltage. And clicky. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, we we're doing this live. We have not done this in post. We do not have a perfectly present pre uh, presentation meal in the oven right now to pull out. We don't. We barely have notes tonight. We're making this up as we go along. All right. So be highly entertained. Hayden, can camera two see the power supply? Check it out. Oh, there you go. Hold on a sec. You can't see the readout. Uh, there we go. There we go. Do, 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 do. Elevate it. I can still. It's too. It's oh, too dark. Can, it. can you see it? You can. You can probably. All right. It in post, but. All right. Right now we're at two. Just under three volts. That's actually that's what we're here for, Jeff. Yeah. Your entertainment. You shouldn't have given him the booze. I, I told you to take it easy on that. It's okay. He's twenty-one. Rodney, your yeah. thoughts. What voltage should we put this at? Uh, I'm told that we should go. Let's start out at like three. Three volts. Yeah, we do not need freaking thirty-six volts going through that. Well, I when you're making solution, I was told the higher the better. I've seen people. You know what? Screw it. All right, let's do it. We're gonna go to fifteen volts and monitor. I mean, the worst that's going to happen is it's going to right. go through the amperage and Aiden, shut the I'm going to do it. I'm going to go right in. All right. Oh, look at that. You see it? Yeah, that's cool. There we go. We're doing modern science. Hey, it's doing what it's supposed to. <laughs> Holy crap. That's amazing. So ho <laughs> hopefully before the night's over, we'll actually see some green. This liquid, I hope, will turn green. Uh, also, it's giving off oxygen. Well, is it giving off oxygen and hydrogen just like water would? Should be, but it is vinegar. But how much vinegar is water? It's acetic acid. And I don't know what that is. You have to ask my dad. All right, we'll we'll get a chemist in here. Oh well, actually, Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> All right. So we got that going. We got that cooking. Uh, started electro uh, making a uh, copper solution. Still not dead yet. We're good. Okay. <laughs> so now to make the. Uh, copper solution to uh, plate the bullet so that we can plate the silver on top so we can fight the so, werewolf. okay here's the thing rodney and i both are working on copper plating solutions at the same time rodney wants to copper plate his freshly cast lead bullets he wants to put a copper jacket on them yes he is tickled to pink because his bullets do come out looking like silver bullets but it's not it's lead no, there's seriously a werewolf problem there's not a werewolf problem, only in your head. Defiance, Ohio, where the guy was mugged by the werewolf. Dude, is this kind of like uh, the 1972. Jersey Devil? 1972. That's the same year as my Harley and the same year as my old Cutlass in the, in the garage. Okay, I can go back to the 1860s. So anyway, we're, we're dropping werewolves and we're moving right along. Um, now, copper. the copper solution is a little bit different. Um I had this whole formula that called for uh, sulfuric acid, muratic acid, and actually a laxative. A laxative. Yeah, there's Is that for you or the solution? Uh, it's in the solution. It's for the solution. Who's coming up with this? This sounds like something you'd be making. Um, well, illegal substances in a freaking van down by the river. I have seen these guys. These I found some people that do a lot of serious copper plating. And uh, a lot of stuff, actually, uh, it has to do with balancing pH levels and all kinds of stuff that you and I, I guess if we do a lot, start doing a lot of this <clears throat> stuff, we're going to pick up as we go. But I would like to start with a simple solution. I don't want to go to. Uh, Is it still doing its thing? It's still doing its thing, yeah. Yeah, it's still rock and roll. Matter of fact, you're actually, I can already see green around. You see it? In the bait, in the bottom, a little bit of green. I'm just waiting for things to blow up. It's not going to blow up. It's not going to blow up. Unlike our other projects. Have you ever seen the soapy water? Make up a super soapy solution in a, uh, I don't know if I should tell you this or not. You make up a super soapy solution in a bucket, a five-gallon bucket, okay? Okay. Then you put your anode and cathode in. And it starts gassing off oxygen and hydrogen, right? 
in bubbles. Yeah, we used to use it, bubblers to catch the hydrogen. In, so but no, you could fill up a bag. So we could it's also up. lighter than air. So you make a gigantic column of suds into the air that then you light it and goes, whoa. I'm in. I know you are. <laughs> Tin Man says hi. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, I can't remember who Tin Man is. Uh, you know, Matt has a list. Matt knows I can't know. read Matt writing. It's not English. It might be. Yeah. It's actually in this book, I think. There you go. <laughs> so anyway, right now, what we're doing, give me camera two again. Right now, we're... Zoom out. Ooh, or should we do this? Well, we're, we're just keeping it on the solution right now. But right now we're making, uh, right now we're actually making a nickel solution. Now this will turn uh, green, right? Green. green. Nickel's green. Yeah. Matter of fact, a look at that. Roach of solid green. Look at that. Look at the bottom. I see there's green. You can actually, in camera one, you can actually see a little bit of green down the bottom. See, it's starting to get a green hue to it down low. Now, would it help if you peed in that? No, it wouldn't. No. It actually, it might help the conductivity. <laughs> see? <laughs> Thinking. Uh, well, all right. See, what did Jeff say? You can have 100% ac vinegar. acidic. Vinegar. Acetic acid is vinegar. Google says white vinegar is 4 to 7% acetic acid, and the rest is water. Oh, okay. So, yeah, we are making hydrogen. Can we super concentrate vinegar as you said? Hey, you know what? This is the same process they use to get oxygen in nuclear submarines. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I can there's some more in there, isn't there? There's more of those, right? I, if this is, well, there's also Matt is Dead. There. That's a good one. <laughs> so, yes. Anyway. Um, no one can read this. Got to go back. I can't remember what date it was. I can read your stuff. I just can't read his. You can't. You can read his. I can read his. Maybe it is in this book. So, Rodney, yes. would you like to talk? Ooh, look at that. About werewolves? No. no stop the werewolves. We're going to uh, talk about... <laughs> Octoman. Did you snort? <laughs> Octoman. That's another good one. A copper solution. It's your turn. Who did that? Is you, right? Did you do that? No, that's not my writing. My writing's all blocky. Who did that? Not me. No, that is amazing. That's a scorekeeping one night. That look at that. Look that's at not me. No, I don't know who that is. I, that's, that's I usually use arrows. Somebody actually used like a straight edge. I think it must have been you. If you used and you didn't misspell Jeff. Uh, yeah, I always spelled with one J. It must have been for the thirty-first. <laughs> all right, so, all right. We're not going to look for the names. He says, continuing to look for the names. Uh, yeah, we're not looking for the names anymore. So anyway, Rodney, yes. you had someone, because I had this whole convoluted uh, formula for making um, for making a copper solution. All right, so my friend since high school, Justin Nipper, who wrote one of the greatest songs to ever end up on WEBN's Joke of the Day, Put It In Your Butt, It's a Joke of the Day, um, says this. First... Everything that I was doing was wrong, which is kind of part for the Was point. that on the course of what I was doing also? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you wanted to put a pump in there, and I do believe we should agitate during I think so, too, but this is what he said. Okay. Use right. vinegar and salt. Use a voltmeter to test conditions. So he said vinegar also? Yes, he did. Because everything I've heard for copper has been distilled water. Yes. So have I, but he's a master jeweler, so I'm going to go with nipper. All right. All right. Vinegar and salt. Use a voltmeter to test conductivity to liking. Increase by adding salt, which we did. But we've already done that with this But we solution. don't know what the conductivity is, so we just added a bunch of salt. And it ran out. All right. Put copper on positive and negative side. Me yes. and cathode. Nothing but copper in the liquid, meaning don't add crap jackass, which is what we were talking about with adding the... Like uh, when I was talking about putting yep. sulfuric acid in there. And, yeah, because I was going with the same and, steel. Jeff, yes, we know. That's what the salt is for in the uh, <laughs> distilled water. Okay, let it sit for a few hours. Then you can put a prepped object on the negative side. Keep as far from the anode as you can, but that's it. It has to sit for a few hours? That's what he says. I don't know. It's turning green. We can do something. Dude, we're doing good. 
That's because he never uses 36 volts. We're using 15 volts. We could crank it up to 36. All right. In capital letters, never stainless. <laughs> no stainless. Uh, never zinc on zinc. Rodney, Always nickel before silver. Uh, this thing is pulling 1.2 amps. Hey, as long as it doesn't crack the internal breaker, we're good to go. No, is that good, though? I mean, I guess. He doesn't give me an amp. Shot for camera two. Zoom out. All right. Never or always nickel before silver. I don't know. It's hard to see them. The, the part readout. must be I clean. Kind of see it. If it's a metal part, a few minutes in an acid bath, hydrochloric acid to prep help. <laughs> yes, that actually helps. From what I understand, it will help to uh, uh, strip away any impurities on the surface and it'll somewhat etch the surface for a. Uh, but I also heard people using muriatic acid as a pre-dip. Well, he says here, I don't yeah. use an oxidizer or any other acid because depending on ratios, you might end up making copper stannate, which I'm not sure what that is, but it doesn't sound good. Okay. Jeff, what's copper stannate? <laughs> Look at it. You can tell in it's camera one, answer. you can tell it's turning green. I know. It's this like, is actually pretty cool. This, see it in the camera too as well. Yeah, it's like holding along the bottom. This is pretty cool. Ooh, can you put our head in there and move it around the screen? Around the... No, we're not doing. You did that. When did you? You were, you ran the controls one night. Yeah, that's the only never night again. Again. Yeah. Never, <laughs> never again. I was encouraging him. It was partly my fault. Uh, never again. <laughs> That was like one of the so first things recap, that I bonded. So to recap, we're making copper. Uh, we're making nickel plating solution right now, using uh, ninety nine percent nickel welding rods with the flux core or the flux outer being removed. Uh, you just hit it with a hammer and it cracks and breaks off. And then I scuffed, cleaned the rest of them up with a scuff pad, and they're in uh, a solution of salt and uh, white vinegar. So he's saying white vinegar for the copper solution also? He said vinegar, acetic acid. Okay. So I guess anything works? I don't know, maybe bad wine. So uh, here's a question. If we wanted uh, a, a, a more um, potent batch of acetic acid, could we boil down and increase the percentage in the white vinegar? I don't see why not. We'd have to look and see what the different boiling points were. We could collect it as well. I mean, you do it with explosives. Not that I would know. <laughs> okay. I mean, I've just, I mean, this, for me, this is right now only a fun little experiment to see what I can do on uh, metal plating or uh, some of my props. Uh, right now, flash suppressors is what well, I'm Well, we've trying. only been talking about this for four years. We have been talking about it for four years. We started it. I had a nickel plating starter kit. Uh, and that's when we realized that nickel doesn't want to plate on anything but copper. <laughs> Apparently, copper standard is antibacterial. Oh, that's cool. That means it probably kills us somehow. 100% powder acetic acid. And then you add water, right? Distilled yeah, water? It's soluble, I think. I wonder what that tastes like. It probably tastes like gross. Battery acid? <laughs> I think gross is better than battery acid. Hmm. Well, to be honest, everything we do, we want to do with what you can get off the shelf at a store. That's why I really wasn't into getting... Oh, sweet. Acetic acid is sweet. Oh. What chemist was the one that found that out? Don't, all right. Now we got... Rod. Oh, stop. That's the salt. Uh, <laughs> I wonder what nickel... Uh, uh, d d you know... You're probably experiencing close to what they feel when you get into radio radiation uh, fallout, like a metallic taste in your mouth. Okay, okay. <laughs> so blood. when I worked at Emory, when the head elect well, not head electrician, he was like right below, he was like 70 years old, uh, Michael Clauser. He was one of those weird people who believed that colloidal silver would Cure, cure anything and everything, and I came in with a cold one day. And I didn't drink know, it. I know some, I know some other people. That and it were, was like drinking sand. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, what I've he actually was blue as well. He was don't like e blue. from what I understand, don't ever do that because it kills off 
all of your gut bacteria. It it will kill, and uh, uh, but it it uh, actually kills everything. And uh, I actually know someone who got very sick from it, and she was taking it. And I was like, I don't know about that stuff. Well, I'm an adventurous person, so I was no. But okay, if if you silver want stuff, yeah, a little uh, silver, yeah, yeah it's sort of like doing this, but with silver. Yeah, water. you look it up. You look it up. You can see what it is, but. Their 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 website saying it's the greatest stuff in the world, and there's other places say don't do this because this is what it'll do, and it'll make you super. Well, sick. Well, that's how you ended up with the blue people in Appalachia. Really? Really? Yeah. Uh, there was colloidal silver in the or there was silver in the water. They were drinking, it and their skin would turn blue. Huh. Which was kind of weird because Michael Clouser well, had sort of bluish tint. Silver poisoning. Uh, he's had to get all the bacteria. <laughs> yeah. Is Jeff our only person today? Yeah, that is there. It's the around. Jeff show. Yeah. I'm, so anyway, um, so I did he did you talk to him about because for me my formula what I found was distilled water, uh, for copper. Add salt. Yeah, this is the same one I was looking at. And then at. also add this. Copper sulfate. Which is copper, copper sulfate. It's in uh, blue crystals, basically. Well, my guess is. would be you would use the distilled water as opposed to regular tap water simply because your distilled water does not have the same crap in it. Right. So you don't know what you're mixing in there. Who wants to make accidental chlorine gas? Not me. But, but you're saying, though, he is using, uh, but your buddy says to use the vinegar instead of the distilled water. He, well, he said, hold on. Stand by. Look at how green it's getting. I know, and it doesn't taste any different. <laughs> <sighs> I can't you're believe you did that. Poisoning yourself? You don't know. I can't there's believe top, you did. There's nickel in there now. Yeah, he says use vinegar and salt. There is nothing in here about water. Ask him about wa distilled water. He's not going to answer right now because this was like from four weeks ago, and he probably doesn't remember. <sighs> Maybe longer than four weeks. Four weeks. Because we moved on to people getting run over by cars. All right. Oh, no. It's a guy taking a dump on the side of the highway. Here. What? No, don't show that on camera. Well, there is no place to hide. Oh, gosh. A prerequisite to be my friend is be weird. Oh. That's on the record now. It is on the record. You can hear. Be sure to be able to figure it out. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> so I I'm gonna make. We were gonna make it tonight, but then there was a little bit of a uh, back and forth on the exact way of doing it. Whether we should use distilled water. I've already bought the distilled water. It's but, right there. You know what? This is looking like that stuff that I drank when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> anyway we are i mean it's turning green and everything yeah so it's it's looking good and there's no there's a little bit of, see now something I, I was told to expect uh flakes and stuff like that and when i'm all done uh, stir it up real good and then run it through uh like a coffee strainer or something like that that'll pull out all the impurities because uh, I guess. Um, well, we do have lots of. No, even here. when you have like the nickel, uh, the little nickel, the you buy for this purpose, nickel uh, sheets. Um, I'm reading Jeff's comments, trying to stay up on Jeff. But anyway, uh, it still does a little chunky, chunky. But I haven't seen any. I just finally saw one little chunk floating around, and it, my tongue feels like it's burned. I wouldn't be surprised. You hear this thing humming away, and it, it's bubbling here and turning green. We're you, doing something. And you drank it? <laughs> <laughs> what happened to that coffee maker? Yeah, that it's was... back uh, over in the corner. That's not going into any projects anymore. So one of the ideas was we were going to use a coffee maker to... He wanted to filter the solution through a coffee maker. filter the solution, more like heat it up. He wanted to run it through... Uh, yeah. Which... For a coffee maker, there's a lot of stuff going on because a coffee maker runs on a timer. This ended up being a Keurig, so it only heats the water and makes one cup of coffee at a time. Yeah, but I can figure what that sensor is and disable it. 
why don't you just make a reservoir with a pump feeding it, put the heating element in there, just have the heating element always on? Because we only do things in the most mad scientist way possible. Uh, you know what it is? I finally figured it out. I was watching E.T. the other day, and then I started thinking about Goonies. And then it even took me to Pee Wee's Big Adventure. And I realized that you are a product of the 70s, grew up in the 80s, and you had all these, like, speak and spell. To talk to aliens in space with a umbrella and a saw blade clicky clicky thing no 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 you okay. think you can convert <laughs> any household appliance into anything you want i do have a story about a guy trying to contact aliens from where i live dude we're already in contact with the aliens you no, know no, no 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 i feel like this i'm talking to an alien okay. when i talk so, to you <laughs> my brother and i are walking up and down i mean it's farm country right and we notice on one of the barbed wire fences every probably foot foot and a half there is a shredded pop or beer can that has been turned into like chaff that you would launch out the back of a plane, aluminum chaff, and tied around this. So <clears throat> we saw Mr. Nagel out there and we asked him, what are you doing? And he said, I'm trying to get the aliens to land here so I can talk to them. So we thought this was cool and this turned into a whole... Uh, Give me camera two, level. please. <laughs> I was into a story. You were into a story. I don't think it's the right time. Did you drink that whole thing? Huh? You didn't drink the whole thing, did you? I can tell you about my world. I still operate the switcher. All right. Go back to camera one. All right. So, are you done with? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just face it right now. No. Whatever the answer is, All right. it's going to be done. <sighs> Uh, okay, so the first week, this is going to be a rough month and a half, isn't it? You can do it, boy. So, since we have just a few people out there tonight, uh, it's kind of a slow night. I didn't know what to expect, and uh, we didn't do, we didn't put our feeler, we didn't let too many people, well, usually we put some Facebook posts and everything. Up. Does that no, 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 get out of there. <laughs> Don't introduce lead into my. That's not lead, that's graphite. It's graphite, yes. <laughs> So, if we hook it to that side, it might turn. So, Hayden, do you want to do the, the, the mic thing tonight? Let's get some feedback from our audience. Let's get some feedback because Hayden realized something. Now, now, put this in context. I said, hey, in the original, why don't we use the um, camera mics? Without ever looking into it or anything, my director over here said, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. It's going to pick up all the background and all the horrible noises and everything. So he actually one night uh, for his own uses, uh, which will be used in the future, recorded one of the, the one of our shows on the camera. And he's like, you know, the mic on the camera ain't that bad. So now he wants to experiment with um, the lapel mics compared to the camera mics. Is that correct? So is this where we mouth everything and no, just not yeah. make any noise? Act like we're talking yeah. when we're not. So he is going to drop the these mics and bring up the camera mic and let's get some feedback uh, on what's going how you how how they sound. Be prepared. You're switching? Uh, it's switching, right? Now. All right. Hello and TV. So now we're on the camera? Yeah. So now we're running uh, audio on the camera. That may actually be louder. I don't know. It probably it, it does look like it's gated. It, it is louder. Now there are no set nothing's been changed on the camera cam. We have used the cameras before uh because we had mic issues. We've also used cell phones. Well we started out on a laptop and then when the laptop didn't show up, we used it's louder. But how does this qual how does it sound? There you go. He's bringing it down a little bit. So he brought it down a little bit. Can you hear a lot of background noise and a lot of interference? Or not really interference, but because we got the fans running because it is hot down here tonight. I'm always cold. So you feel pretty good. Yeah. Ah, Jeff says it's not as good. It's louder, but not as good. Oh. All right. We're going back to the. Better to do this when Matt talks. There we go. All right. So we're back on our mics. No, don't 
Kenny. Hey, Bill. <laughs> All right, cool. So anyway, um, well, this is really, I mean, it's starting to really, if we let this run all night, we'll have a nice big thing of liquid nickel. Or fire. <laughs> or fire. Don't I think if I run funny. it, if I run it through the night, I'm going to put it on a search, uh, a, 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 a search protector, and I'm going to run it off the five volt power supply. Oh, f come on, Rodney. What? It's funny. One. Do you remember the times I cut my hand? Yeah. What are you doing? I am making an intercom system. Oh. It's like in school. Okay, so we don't have enough string to reach everybody. No, no, no. We don't there. need that. Okay. <laughs> so remember when you were in high school yeah, and they would talk on the uh, intercom system and you couldn't understand anything they said? This, I'm my theory is this will sound just like that. <laughs> Hello, Chuck. I think uh, cover the office, Chuck. You know, see, here's the thing. You're just diverting it away from your microphone towards my microphone. All right. So I don't even know where we are. We were on copper. We were on copper. So basically, we do need it. We do need a copper solution because the nickel doesn't like going on top of uh, the graphite. Basically, yeah, it's like a layer thing. Certain things go on top of others. So, things. and I've actually, and now when uh, I've come across, you know, working in the body shop, uh, I've come across um, plastic grills that are chrome plated uh, or chrome plastic grills, and I've noticed when the chrome is damaged, especially on older ones, there is a layer of copper. Before the chrome plating. Wells. No one likes you. Please <laughs> <laughs> break. Well, thank you, Matt. You Matt um, actually, Matt, if you would like, um, I'm thinking next week. Would you like to Skype in? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> that will be terrible. I can already what see we'll it. do is we'll. Ooh, think you and Matt versus me and Larry. Oh, no, 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 it'd be fun. Wouldn't it be fun to have a monitor here with Matt Skyping as <laughs> Matt's big face and a monitor? Just no, we face. just run a speaker so he so, talks to a Jigglypuff. Or so, Matt, like you have Miss Rodney talking for 40, uh, 42 minutes about werewolves and aliens. How is he like? And he was show? also test tasting the nickel solution. Uh, and we wonder why he has such bad health issues. <laughs> uh, diabetes is totally related to nickel solutions. Uh, at least maybe heavy metals. Uh, <laughs> I love that movie. That heavy metal? Movie. Mm -hmm. Soundtrack's awesome. Mm -hmm. We're getting off track. Thank you, Joe. I am Hayden. No, Matt, actually, you just missed what I usually go through every time you see me. No, but uh, we are making, Matt, right now, we're making science. We're doing science. It's Get science! On Get a zoom on on that. Oh. Come on, there you go. Science! See? Oh, you changed it. As soon as I got my finger off, it's like, it, it what happened? Look, I didn't do that! It doesn't look Sorry. dangerous at all. Don't worry. Wait, should we be smoking near this? And it's the uh, concentration is very low. Don't worry about it. We'll be fine. The one, the, 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 you know what we will do, Rodney? We get a day outside. Outside, we get a day. I'm rebuilding the flame launcher? No, we get a day. There's not a lot of wind. We'll make a super soapy solution, drop an anode and a cathode in there, and we will make a hydrogen column that will set off. Can I build another flame launcher for okay. it? Okay. Mythbusters did this, and they made one that went all the way to the ceiling. Of but M5. they didn't have a flame launcher. Yes, dude, you know they had a flame launcher. Yeah, but not one was cool. They see little guys. So, Jeff knows what I'm talking about. I, I remember you when you built it. Also, so we're gonna have a. Um, uh, we are gonna have a nickel or a copper solution, uh, hopefully. Uh, by the weekend, because I need to get to start trying to figure out if I can get it to plate. Also, I uh, have one failed attempt of doing a graphite a graphite spray, 
and I'm going to try to make a different formula that works maybe hopefully a little bit better because I would like to be able to make a spray to be able to spray a conductive coating that doesn't um, take away the detail. That's the problem because that's why I didn't want to use that. The cracks. Yeah, uh, yeah, that stuff that we were talking about, Hayden, what's it called? Uh, Super Shield? Oh, yeah. The, the zinc. Cold, the yeah, nickel that's paint. what we used to use. Is it memory. nickel paint or zinc paint? Nickel paint. Okay, well, whatever it is. Uh, it. Um, I thought it was zinc because it comes I out. I think like it gray. is zinc. Hey. Uh, well, yeah, pull it up because you still What's got it. it. Super Shield? Super Shield. Yeah, you would put that on your grounding when you put it in. Yes, the and it also is a, uh, uh, they use it for uh, grounding or uh, shielding electronics. Uh, that's why it's made for. It's nickel. It is nickel, conductive Ooh. paint. Yeah. But it's used as a shielding uh, for electronic devices. Uh, um, for. Um, plastic it's used to create a shielding on plastic parts for electronics that's because you have um oh, that's a lot <laughs> you have I transformer don't action with ac yes. or something where it the, it'll interfere with other but what i found parts. is it does not spray thinly it I, I haven't found this i've just seen the stuff being used people using it just like when people uh were mixing up uh the uh uh, enamel paints and uh, uh, or acrylic paints, I'm sorry, and uh, uh, the graphite powder to create a conductive paint. Want some acrylic paints? Uh, no, uh, but anyway, they they it, there was no way to spray that stuff because it's so thick. So I'm trying to figure out. I want to be able to spray it. You know, uh, I bet still that's the one thing that I hate that does not work is that copper. The copper spray paint. I bet that that spray would stick really well to hair. Do you think we could copper plate Matt? No, yeah. we you well, no well, no. We already talked about it. We did talk about it. Of Matt, and then we would copper plate it, and then we would make a cool mm. statue of Matt. I'd rather just copper we plate bronze Matt. plate it. Why bronze? Why not copper? Uh, here's the thing, green. though, for like bronze and stuff like that. I can better in the time it takes us and the expense and everything. I can actually reproduce that with paint and weathering. <laughs> it would look awesome. I'll even add bird poop. And Larry's to rust material that's toxic that we're not supposed to touch. Uh, Larry's rust material. Yes. Um, Larry's rust material is actually kind of cool. Um, yeah, and and when you're playing with it, they had, goes, this is very toxic, by the way. Oh, should, there, uh, there was a con. Now, this is kind of fun. There was a convention because you know how I like to take blasters because I never buy a booth because there's no way. Um, for whatever reason, back, yeah. you're never going to make the money back. <clears throat> so you have someone who buys a booth and then you help supplement their booth by giving them a percentage of your stuff that they sell. Um, I've always been very successful doing this at Lexington. I have never been successful doing this at Expo. But... Um, they didn't, they, the guys that we're working with, they make like armor stuff and clone type stuff and don't really make blasters. So half of their wall was blasters of mine. The other half of their board in the back was Larry stuff. And a lot of people were coming up and saying, Hey, can I check out that? And they were checking out my blasters. And then other people were coming up and checking out. Uh, Larry's stuff. So it was all one-offs because that's all Larry does. And one Larry only does one-offs. And Larry does one-offs of my cast-offs. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. I've been involved in many of Larry projects. Um, wow. The, the guy that was running the booth, the mutual friend of ours. Uh, Matt's got a mouth on him tonight. It's because he's not here. Uh, after after every time he handled uh, one of Larry's props, he put it up and he's like, man, I feel like I need to get a tetanus shot now. <laughs> Did he meet Larry? Well, yeah, he knows Larry. We're all okay. friends. Well, then, you know, you should know you should get a tetanus shot. Just because Larry made it. <laughs> it's just the rust. It's the rust and the jagged metal and the hose clamps. <laughs> and the fact he does everything only wearing boxers. <laughs> <laughs> so check out that solution it's really turning green now <clears throat> whoa look at that 
That's awesome. Hayden? Yes, sir. You should have taken a screen grab of it. It's Science! Look at it. It's really working, though. I'm, I'm actually excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, does that map mean that we are Waldorf and Statler? Statler and Waldorf. Statler right. and Waldorf. I'm You're sorry. Right. I'm sorry. Uh, one of the two guys from uh, uh, Training Places. I don't know. Oh well. Statler and Waldorf. They, they, they always those two guys kind of remind me the two the names of those guys and uh, it almost feels like they were kind of based on those characters. I, I think it's more like <laughs> Tango and Cash sort of. Thing. Oh, Tango and Cash. I saw that in the movie theater. God, we're old. What a disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> what got, a disappointment. We got eight minutes and 30 seconds. We got eight minutes and 30 seconds. You want to start recapping? Because we know werewolves will come up again, and that'll... that'll. <laughs> so anyway, we are making Nickel Solution in front of your very eyes. Look at it. Be amazed. Ooh. Science. Fear our magical abilities. So uh, we're running at 15 volts right now. I'm going to turn it up just for fun to 30 volts. Oh, you know, don't have the wide lens. Go ahead and bring it in. Let's see how much more active it is. You want looks. to move like a couple inches away from that, just in case? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Now, but you can see like a vapor coming off now. <laughs> What's it smell like? Don't smell it. I, I'm trying now, but I'm getting a little bit woozy. You're supposed to waft it, not smell it directly. So, from what I understand, when you're making solution, it works best. It, it, it my, it works. It, it, ha it works faster the higher the voltage. Um, but I've never seen anybody go below 15 volts. But that's because their power supply only went to 15 volts because they bought the cheap one compared to Rodney here splurging and buying the nicer one. That I went. needed something that went to 24 volts. See, there you go. And the one, see, it's kind of funny because the one that's under this one is half as much as this. This The, the one that's under this is like 30 bucks. This is what, 60 bucks? Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I don't know what prices in 2022 are now. Yeah, you, I'm oh amazed God. in this shop, this thing has not been killed yet. <laughs> well, the only people who use it are you and I. Yeah, and like... I and you tell me use it all the time, and I'm like, I don't want to. If I can do something else without, because I don't want to burn this thing up. Well, like I said, if it how valuable? Up, I it or... How valuable has this thing been on projects? The lighting, lighting for testing the... all our stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. A very inexpensive investment for what we've gotten out of it. And I cranked it back down to 15 volts. So this one here is starting to turn black. See it? Ooh, see, that's, that's where... Hand. See, your arm is in, your your arm is in the way. Put it, back, left arm. put it back on camera one. There you go. Oh, all right, there you go. Uh, you suck at this. There you go. See that? that see that? Now, that is where the black... The suet is, or the the goobies coming from, because when I pulled it out, they came off. Oxidization. Maybe? Yeah, I guess so. But anyway, the uh, you hear the hum stop on the power supply. It's going to start back up here in a second. Yeah, you're creating a direct short. There it is. So it's working. It's going to be great. Um, yeah. Now watch this when you pull it out. Watch the amperage drop. Well, I already watched the amperage drop. It dropped to zero. Mm -hmm. Now this side. It pulls it over. Yes. Now, see the bottom of it? To the see how the bottom is discolored? Uh, I learned that that's called a burn, and that is caused by too much uh, voltage. Uh, so during the plating process, uh, from what I understand, the recommended voltage is about 3 volts, <coughs> which we can do perfectly fine right here with this power supply. Which is great. So uh, the plating process should be should be happening around three volts, is what I've been told. And it doesn't really take all that long either. No, we've been doing uh, this has been going for just under an hour now, and we're already getting a really good looking copper solution. I got a lot of copper, magical green, magical green. So we let this. It's run. like Baja Blast. <laughs> you want us to save you some, Matt? Some Baja Blast. We'll give you some. So uh, here in a little while, uh, actually, we're going to let this run all night long. Uh, I am all gonna, night long. I am going to unhook it from this power supply, and I'm going to hook it to a different power supply, um, and then put a surge protector on it to uh, just in case. Nipple rings are not a power supply. <laughs> no, I got the uh, I got the uh, uh, one I use for plating. I've been experimenting with the plating stuff. It's right over there. Nipple ring.
Let's review. <laughs> when is uh, when are we uh, uh, having our contest this month? Thirty twenty-eight. Uh, DL forty-four bestman. Yes, that's what we're playing for. When is it? Twenty-eight. That could be a twenty-eight. That could be a twenty. That could be a Z. And that's an alien. That's a twenty-eighth. Signet. Give me that back. Just give it to me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, on the 28th of this month, the last Tuesday of the month, is game night. On game night, we are going to be playing for a... DL44? Bespin version. Another ESB. Last month's was the ESB uh, Hoth version. We're doing the ESB uh, Bespin. Which is two blasters in one. Um... <laughs> Yeah, because it was used by Luke. Uh, Han and, and Luke. Uh, but people traditionally call the, the Bespin the Luke DL-44. I'm going to go with two blasters and one. It uh, is it, double it, your money. It, it's tr uh, Truthfully, it should be just called the Bespin DL-44 because it was used by Han and Luke on uh, Bespin. And this is also the same blaster that Luke had on um, Dagobah, except for... The ESB stunt, which is also shows up on Dagobah, and it also shows up on the Muppet Show. Very, very well, prominently. Well, I got a dumb question. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, did they never think they were making another movie and just lost all the parts in between each movie and the original trilogy for the for the gun? Okay, this is how it worked. Are you ready for this? Empire and ESB uh, were all rentals. Okay. Okay. So, um, they didn't translate over. Uh, now, ESB is kind of a funny one because there is a little bit of rental, and then there is a little bit of uh, in-house blaster work. Okay. Um, the Sterlings were still primarily mm -hmm. rentals. Uh, but the Hoth DL-44 was a rental. The Bespin DL-44 was a model gun corporation Mauser replica, a uh, blank firing replica. That is one of the in-house uh, blasters. And um, one of my favorite blasters of all, and I will tell you this now, uh, we, we, I've covered this once before, May, I almost want to do a whole show on this one blaster and the ESB stunt is that blaster uh, because the ESB stunt is a very cool blaster because it bridges from a new hope all the way to return of the Jedi. And uh, when I get around to having another ESB stunt in house in hand, um, I will uh, talk about that further because it is one of my favorite blasters just for one simple reason. Uh, it's history. Uh, uh, it actually has a very strange pedigree also of what the base of that gun really was. So, yeah. And it ties all three of the original trilogy movies together in a very cool way. So mm -hmm. I, that's one of my favorite blasters. Um, so actually I've already decided that the next, um, giveaway next month's giveaway will actually be the ESB stunt, uh, because, uh, I am rebuilding the Etsy, uh, inventory, uh, right now with Etsy, I have to, part of the reason why the Etsy page has not been rebuilt faster is because resin prices are through the roof. I did come back from Texas again. Uh, yes. Resin prices are through the roof. I was attacked um, by parrots. Uh, <laughs> a lot of the co uh, the resin costs is almost double what it was uh, pre-pandemic, pre-Rodney going to Texas. Um, so it's a lot more expensive to just make the blasters and throw them up on the thing. Plus to fill orders. And I haven't raised my prices to really reflect, um, shrinkage. 
no, really reflect what the increase in the prices really are. There's only been one increase, and it was like a 10, I think it was a 10% increase, and that was uh, over a year ago when the Etsy papers Look, the rest up. of us are dealing with like 10% inflation. You can move it up 10%. Uh, yeah, but the material costs are 100 times more than what they were originally. So, so basically, it's a lot more... It's a lot more to make the blaster, and I don't make nearly as much, which makes it harder to buy more material, which is what I'm saying. And you're not using filler. So before, uh, it was easier to just make what I needed and throw them up on the page, and I didn't have to actually. Now I have to have tips. They have to be tip. They have to have the protect. You know the the safety. You know the orange tips on them, and that means I have to make one of everything and then put a tip on it. And that's super expensive. So, yeah, I waited a terrific amount of time to do the Bosch helmet, didn't I? Yeah, but you you didn't buy any of your material before. But see, the price hikes have even, have continued. Ah, but I now still need resin. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know what to do. Really, I mean, the <laughs> profit is almost completely absorbed. But then at the same time, I don't want to raise the prices. I want people to enjoy these things at the best possible price. I can get them to them. And where they are now is the most comfortable place for me. And if I raise them, it helps me, but I don't want, I don't know. I really don't know what I'm going to do, but he needs a hug. Everybody <laughs> should give him a hug. I'm going to keep making stuff. Everything is still available. It's just not on Etsy. Ready to wrap it up? Yeah, I am ready to wrap it up. We're not accepting Bitcoin now. We right? were, yeah, we were wrapping it up anyway. So uh, join us uh, next week. What we'll be doing next week is we will actually be trying to put. Were you, what'd you do? I accidentally hit fade to black. Uh, uh, Metallica. Were you thinking of Metallica? Is that what no, it was? No, I just said so no. next Paint week. black. Next week we will thing. be trying to use oh. this nickel solution. <laughs> Camera two. Number two. This nickel solution to plate um, some plastic parts. So hopefully next week we will be able to copper plate and nickel plate. And that's what next week's show will be about. That will be ending this saga of uh, this month's uh, project or this month's topic is electroplating. I don't even remember what last month's was. <laughs> Talking about electroplating. Adventures with Matt. Adventures with Matt. But anyway, next week we'll be electroplating, and uh, the 28th is the uh, giveaway. It'll be a DL44. Family Feud is the game. I hope to see everybody next week. And Hayden, you have anything to add? No. Do we have any fire extinguishers? Good night. <laughs>